here um, with my review of the TGM7 Tabletop Gaming Resin. So first thing we're going to do, let's look at the uh, close-up high-res photos of the Dragonborn and the Crossbow Slinger. And I would say this resin holds very good detail. It's not at the level of, say, uh, Soraya, uh Fast Navy Gray or the Epax Hard Gray, but it did hold very good detail. I mean, the selling point, though, of this resin is detail, which it's good at. Not quite as good as the best of the best, but it's also survivability. So this next part coming up is important. This is the next part is where we get into the science of rigidity, flexibility, uh, covalence, all the kind. Oh, wait. Okay, pretty good. First for our scientific test. Um, let's, let's do some more tests. So you'll notice in the picture, his the Dragonborn sword is a little bent. It did not print bent. What happened is, and this is actually part of the test, I guess. I had printed these out about a week ago and meant to make the video. And then just for various reasons, just didn't have time to really sit down and do it. So the Dragonborn, unfortunately, without realizing it, he kind of... Uh, slid under a piece of paper I had on my desk and then I put something heavy on top of the paper not realizing he was under there So his sword is bent not broken bent because it had something sitting on it. So that's maybe actually a good sign. So let's God, I always hate this part. Let's take that sword that was already bent for a week and start bending it uh, You saw you guys saw that right I just bent it 180. Okay, so that flexibility hype, you know, lives up to it, I guess. Can I bend it back? Or will it break? I can bend it the other way. Bend it the other Whoa, that's impressive. Because usually, even flexible one way, if you bend it the other way, usually it will break. So that. That did pretty well there, I guess. Let's bend it again. If you keep bending, it has to it has to break it, right? Eventually. Uh, pretty good though. And I can actually still straighten it out, and it looks. You can't you can't actually tell that it was bent now. I don't think that's actually that's pretty good. But obviously, you know, thin things bend better than thick things. Obviously, if I try to do that to like the arm, it's going to snap. It can't. It can't have that kind of flexibility on a thicker piece. So let's let's break the tail and let me see what kind of. Well, first, let me just give a couple of the with that flexibility. Oh, okay, broke off. Of course, as I always say, wherever I glue anything with with the crazy glue, as opposed to doing a resin weld. That's where it pops out. It didn't actually break. The glue just broke. The, the actual pieces are intact. But anyway, now the sword is separate. Let's 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 really break this. Okay. It is now pressed down. All right, I think if I press the joint hard enough, I think I heard it snap. Okay, so I can break it. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Let's let's give it some more tosses here. Uh, and again, the TGM7, the tabletop gaming. So this is supposed to be their durable resin. Let's uh, give it some more of a toss here. That had a nice bounce to it too. Hold on, be right back. Okay, nothing broke on here. Now what we have that we can break, we've got a, one little finger sticking out, got the tail tip sticking out. It's got kind of thin horns sticking up. So any of those would be good spots to break. Even even the the uh, the nails on the toes should be fairly breakable. So let's just give them some tosses. Still good. Let's give them the full toss. Still good. All right, let's give them a super hard one off the ceiling. That ah, doesn't count. All right, that got him. Oh, but you know what? Again, that broke off. It didn't break. It separated the hand where it was glued, but it didn't. It didn't actually break. The, the the joint, both joints are intact. The glue actually broke. The figure did not break at all. So so far we've had two things pop off, but they were both modular pieces, and there's actually no damage, 
no damage to the actual piece itself. The hand is still fully intact. And that sword where, where it popped out is still fully intact. It's just the glue bond broke. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, let's... All right, let me just break the tail then since it's, it doesn't... Let me try again. That was a big fall. Okay, there's still no breakage on the model yet. Let's do one more really hard one, then I'm just going to break it by hand if it doesn't break from this. Wow. Okay, so still no nothing damaged yet. This, this resin is holding up. Great. Let me try to directly throw it. What would it be easiest to hit? Uh, I, can, I think I can get the horns. Yep, and slamming it down like that, I think I broke just the tip of that horn off. Of course, that, I don't know if I've even thrown it. I kind of slammed it into the table as opposed to throwing it. That time it didn't even break the second horn, though. All right, let me break the tail. Let me see what kind of force this requires to... So it's got some good flex going. I try to break it. It's actually... Even though this is thicker, the thin part is giving some decent flex here. Huh. Okay, I really thought that was going to snap, so... Okay, now it did. That's, that's going to survive some drops. Okay, this, this... I'm not sure, you know, what the marking hype is. You know, they saw them being thrown all over and not breaking. And I guess, like, so far... What I've done to it is way more than a normal fall before I could break it. Let me test the, the legs, what kind of pressure it takes for the legs. Okay, now see, at the thickest part, funny enough, that, that, that wasn't an inordinate amount of pressure. That wasn't as hard to break as I thought it was going to be, but it doesn't seem to break from the falls. But from falls, it did great. So let's... I hate doing that to a figure. Okay, let's try on the gunslinger. So I'm expecting, based on what happened there... Um, when I throw this, I'm expecting both hands to pop off because they, they are glued on with crazy glue. Um, so, based on that figure, I, I assume the guns are going to pop off, but let's see if anything actually breaks. Like, this thin sword handle is a perfect candidate for breaking on a drop, and, and that's what we'll try to break, if depending on what happens. First, let's give it just some drops like this, which are pretty bad, actually. I mean, huh, so far, nothing. I gave it a little spin that time to try to... Everything good so far. All right, let's let's go for the... Let's go for the big ones. You know, this becomes the equivalent of like a five to six foot drop one, two. This, this surface, you guys, if you watch my videos, you know the surface, it all bounces. This is not a soft table. This is, this is a hard table. And the floor, when I miss it, bounces onto the floor. It's a concrete floor with a very thin overlayment of, of like cheap ass, you know, uh, fake wood. So it, it's hard as anything. See? Oh, okay. So that time, and I thought that was one of the guns. That was actually the, that handle I was concerned about because it was so thin. So I was actually hoping that would survive that kind of drop and it didn't. So I still, so far this is doing probably in drop test and, and what it takes to break it. It's probably one of the best I've ever tested, actually. But honestly, I was hoping that that from a fall like that, that that thin part would survive, and it didn't. So that that's too bad. That would have made it like that would have been incredible um, if it could survive that. But so far, like I said, detail has been very good, and break test results so far very good. But let's keep breaking. Okay, that went down to basic concrete floor, and I can hear. So surprisingly. The gun still didn't come off even from that. That fall was uh, eight feet onto concrete, basically, and and nothing nothing broke that time. So let's do one more of those big ones and see what happens. Nope, doesn't count. This guy's bouncing funny off the ceiling. Surprisingly, the crossbows didn't even pop out yet. That's 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 surprising. But this is surviving drops because. Crossbow tips are thin. Top of the crossbows are thin. He's got the the point of the cloak here, which which looks like it should be easy to break. Um, that's about everything else. He's he's kind of thick everywhere else. But 
Let's just do one more because I'm actually this is actually holding up pretty well. Actually, I'm surprised. This is, this is pretty good. Okay, something had to break there. Wow. Okay, so that that one was pretty big. I threw it very hard off the ceiling, eight foot drop to the basically concrete floor, and nothing further broke. So. Let me just let me just pop these off anyway, see what it takes. I see now I can break it out. That's again, that's the glue breaking. The figure didn't break. That's just the yeah, the glue comes right out. Um, let's talk about breaking this figure too. Let me see about this the tip of this cloak. Ow. Okay, this is this one's harder. I don't know why. Okay, we won't be breaking that today. Let's break the arms instead. And that actually hurt and I couldn't break it, so. Okay, another point for durability. Okay. With significant force, I can pull an arm off. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully no one handles their minis like that, but this one's tougher. Can't get good leverage. Ow, again. All right, forget it. So, <laughs> my review my review of this resin, uh, I, it, I'll be honest. The detail, like I said, is not the best, but it's good. You see, well, you judge from the pictures yourself. I don't have to convince you it's good or bad you can look at the pictures my opinion of it is that the detail is is pretty good uh considering how it did in the brake test i mean this is some durable stuff I, i'm not sure it's gonna it won't stand up to every fall again like you saw stuff break i'm throwing it very hard yes and that's probably way more impact than you would normally ever give a mini even you knock it off your table or whatever i can't imagine it would have the force of me tossing it pretty hard up to the ceiling, then back down to a concrete floor. Um, but it's not impervious. Okay, it's not it's not a magic resin that it just can survive any fall, no matter what or any abuse you give it. But it looks like it's going to survive those falls and that abuse more, I think, than basically any resin I've tested. I'm trying to think back to see if any resin did better in brake test than this. I mean, if this isn't the best I've, I've had in my brake test, it's up there enough that I can't remember anything being better. So I will, I will, I will give props to them for making a, you know, a resin that's, uh, that's quite durable and still holds pretty good detail. Like it's, you know, again, you look at the pictures, you judge for yourself. For me, I mean, for most of us, that detail is more than enough for your tabletop, of course. And, and so if, I guess this is a good resin if you have, uh, you know, kids at your game table or clumsy adults at your game table or, you know, nerd rage adults at your table who throw their stuff now and then, although if they throw it hard, it may not survive anyway. Um, I can't remember the price this, but I think this stuff is pretty, this is some pretty expensive juice here. So let me flash the price. So, you know, if I was going to use this, now I hand, honestly, I handle my minis carefully. So, because it's expensive, I wouldn't be using it, but I totally would recommend it to people who do rough handle their maze, like I said, or who, who use them with children or clumsy adults or have the cat or dog around that might knock them flying. You know, it might be worth the investment for your, even if you only use it for your most prized minis or what you're really worried about, it might be worth spending the extra money to get, you know, the added durability, considering that it also holds really good detail again not the best but i would never expect a resin that's really really strong and has some flexibility to also hold the best detail and maybe we'll get there one day with one of these formulas but I, i'm not there seems to be a trade-off between you know uh strength flexibility and then accuracy so but i still give it high marks i i, I think it's uh, i think it's a pretty good resin and it's a solid choice for people who don't mind spending the extra money to get the extra durability um so that's it. So that's the Amero Labs TGM7 for tabletop gaming. Again, you saw what it took to break the pieces. You see the high-res photos, so you will decide if, uh, if it's good for you or not. In terms of printing, I think printing speed, the settings I used were basically the same I used um, for my Epax Hard or my Soraya Navy Gray, so nothing nothing out of the ordinary uh, in terms of, of, of printing issues or anything like that. So, uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more resin reviews, more print reviews, 
please uh, consider supporting uh, my Patreon. I use the money from the Patreon to buy things to review because not everyone sends me stuff to review. Oh, full disclosure, um, Amerilabs did send me this to review. This, this one I did not buy with the Patreon money. They actually sent this out to me uh, to review. As you know, it does not influence my review at all because brake tests are brake tests, pictures are pictures. It is what it is. I don't care about getting a bottle of free resin. So, but just wanted to let you guys know it was sent to me. But that's it. So uh, please tune in for more videos. I've got my lychee series. I know it's lychee. I got my lychee series coming up uh, soon with instructional stuff. I'm going to release my, my lychee uh, insane support settings very, very soon. I'm working on that video now. Um, and we'll go from there. So thanks. Happy 3D printing, everyone.